Verses 10 through 17. Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. And the Bible says like this, it's quite a few scriptures, so I'll have you just sit where you're at as we look through scripture. So Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17 says, Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and can, could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, there are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox and donkey from the stall and lead it away to to water it, so ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. How many are grateful for God's word this morning? The touch of Jesus. I want to begin the day by letting you know that Jesus walks into a synagogue. Now, for those of you that don't know what a synagogue is, it's a church. It's a Jewish temple. And what is interesting about this moment is that when Jesus brings uh, this to light, it, the doctor, Dr. Luke, uh, Luke was a doctor, he writes this and he says, in the synagogue, there was a woman who was bound by a spirit of infirmity. And when I read that, it leaped in my spirit because many people can find themselves in the presence of a community, in the presence of God, where the word of God is spoken, where the worship is being released and grateful hearts are praising God. And yet you can sit and be bound by some things. Which leads us to understand that you can be in church and still be bound. But I'm grateful for Jesus because the Bible says that although everyone else thought it was just a sickness, uh, a handicap, a, a, a situation that perhaps, you see back in the days they used to think that if you were 
sick that way, it was because you are carrying the sins of your fathers. And so now you have that infirmity in you or you are sick by that because of the infirmities of your fathers. But, but Jesus was able to identify, number one, the real issue. And I'm grateful that we have a Jesus that can see the real issue. We have a Jesus that can see the things that nobody else sees. We have a Jesus that won't let you live and leave this place the same way you walked in. We have a Jesus that says, I know you walked in a certain way, but I know the real issue and I'm going to deal with the real issue this day because today is the day that everything changes for you. Come on, for your family, for your finances, for your children. I know the real deal. I want to talk to a father who's been carrying the burden of things that are unspoken many times. As a man, you carry things over your life and over your shoulders that many times when you walk into your home, you don't talk about it. You just kind of go through it and deal with it. And everyone else sees that you're kind of quiet in the corner. Nobody else really, hey, he's just that way. That's just the way he is. But the truth is that you're there and you're in that position and you're in that circumstance because there's some things you've been carrying. But I'm so grateful for Jesus that sees the real issue. And today I got a word for somebody. God is getting ready to release you from every burden. God is getting ready to release you from every weight. God is getting ready to release you from every generational curse. I come to declare that the Jesus I serve and the Jesus that is in this church won't let you go back home bound. But today's the day of your release. Somebody needs to shout like you believe. Today's the day everything changes. She came in. So she walked into the church. You know, it reminds me of how we walked into the church. We walked in, you know, there's so many people. I hate going to church because it's full of hypocrites. I hate going to church because it's full of, that's like walking into a gym and saying, I hate coming to the gym because there's a lot of overweight people. Brother, that's why we're here. Because we need some help. Because we need some deliverance. Because we need some, we need God to restore something. Come on. We need God to do something that, that the world, that the that alcohol can do. We need God to do something the drug can do. We need, to, we need God to do something sex can do. We need to do God. We need God to do something that nobody else could do. We all need some help. And you might have walked in a little messed up, but I'm so grateful for Jesus because he sees the real issue. And this is the day you're going to come out change. Come on, church. If I have a church that believes that with me you ought to clap your hands Luke 12 2 says like this for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed neither hid that shall not be known you know I used to read this verse and it used to scare me because it used to remind me of my grandmother every time I left my house my grandmother would say, you better watch what you're doing because he's watching you. And there was this picture painted that God was hunting for me to mess up. He's behind a bush somewhere. <laughs> watch out, Rob. We're going to get him right now. We're going to get him right now. Ooh, that girl's coming. Okay, we're going to get him. The friends are coming. Okay, 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 we're going to get him. We're going to get him. Oh, he did the right thing. We'll get him next time. As if God was watching you. Can I, can I offer you a different perspective? 
just a different perspective. It's not God's watching you. It's God's watching you. It's a different perspective. It's he's on you or he's making sure everything's good with you. And when Luke writes, he's letting us know it's not a God who has a spiritual belt ready to punish you. It's a God who has wings that covers you. It's a God who will be there and protect you from the things that you can't see. And he says, nothing is hidden from God. In other words, the reality is that God always puts you in a place where the true healing can become a reality in your life. This woman comes into the synagogue and the Bible says that Jesus calls her out. Again, we have a woman who was not asking for healing. Watch this. The Bible never says that this woman was there to be healed, which means that she was okay and had already got used to the dysfunction. But aren't you grateful that there are some things that God is not okay with that you're okay with? Oh, let me talk to this side. <laughs> let me remind you that there are some things that you've become okay with that God's not okay with. And he'll call you out. And he said, you, you, I see you, I see you hunched over. I see you bent. I, I see you, you're, you're, you're bent over. I, I need you to come forward. And, and then he makes the invitation like he makes the invitation today. Jesus invites you to come close. Jesus always invites you to come close. Hold up. But I thought I had to be good before I come to God. You've ever said that? I, I can't, I'm not ready because I'm just not ready to change yet. I'm not ready to go to church. I'm not ready to, this whole Christian walk. I'm just not ready to change. Oh, I'm coming after you today. Because if you could change on your own, what would you need God for? If you could do it on your own, what do you need a savior for? But each and every one of us here are here because we couldn't do it on our own. We couldn't break the addiction on our own. We couldn't break the bondage on our own. We couldn't break the generational curse on our own. We couldn't break the habit on our own. But when we came up to Jesus, watch this, the love of Jesus took our disappointments and made it a divine appointment. And when I came with my disappointment, the divine appointment of God straightened me up he set my feet on solid ground he changed my life why because he dealt with the real issue and the Bible says that when this woman came she was in other words she was bent over she was hunched over for 18 years hunched over bent forward she walked every here's I want you to I want you to see this picture I want you to see this picture she is bent and all she sees for 18 years is the floor for 18 years she could never look up for 18 years she could never see possibilities for 18 years all it was was heartache disappointment it was discouragement for 18 years all she did was look down but I'm so grateful for Jesus because when she got an encounter with Jesus Jesus calls her out and number two one touch from Jesus can release you from 18 years of torment Jesus watch this Jesus 
uses the word and he says, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. I thought that was interesting because this is the first and only time that Jesus uses this word to bring a miracle. And so the Bible says that he uses the word and he says, woman, you are loosed and immediate from your infirmity. Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. So I got that word and I said, what is this? Why would he use this word? And the word loosed is the Greek word. I hope I don't mess this up. Apoluo. Everyone say Apoluo. If we said it wrong, we all said it wrong together now. Apoluo. He says, Woman, you are Apoluo. And what that word means, it literally means to be discharged or to be divorced. So I, you know, I got my preaching. Mm -hmm. I heard a B3 Hammond in the back. And I'm like, okay, I got to preach this thing now. Woo! Yes, this is what he said. Everything you were tied to in your past, everything that binded you, everything that had you tied up, every spiritual soul tie you ever had, every spiritual soul tie that was in your mind, today is the day. Everybody else just saw you as hunched back, but I know the real issue. The real issue was spiritual. The real issue was that there was something inside of you that had you so bound you were married to your dysfunction but today I declare over you that everything that tied your soul and everything you were married to in the past I'm going to break it off of you in the name of Jesus I'm talking to somebody that didn't know why they behaved the way they behaved. I, I'm talking to somebody that's tried to change. You've lost your mind not knowing why. I've come to tell you, Jesus is about to break you loose from everything that kept you bound. I declare that every offense that was tied that tied your soul is broken off of you. Every spirit of unforgiveness is broken off of you. We are going to call, the Bible says that only God can judge. And so as the judge, he says, I hereby declare you divorced from your past. You will no longer be bound. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but the judge has spoken. You will be divorced from your pain. You will be divorced from your pain. I loose you in the name of Jesus. I break every soul tie in the name of Jesus. I break every generational curse in your family of divorce. I break it in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God some praise. If you believe God's got the power to make you free today. This is what he literally said to the woman. He literally said, I hear that pronounce you divorced from that spirit that had you bound. That's what he said. He said, I loose you for 18 years. Oh, can you, can you believe this with me? That 18 years, she can never see forward. 18 years, she never had clear vision. 18 years, she can never see a bright future. And I want to talk to somebody today that you've tried and you've tried and you can't seem to see how your family's going to break out of this. You tried and, and you've been married. Maybe somebody here has been married 18 years. I don't know. And it's been like it's always just, or maybe you got an 18-year-old son 
And it's just been like, I can never see him getting up from this situation. I'm here to let you know and declare over the word of the Lord to you. Today's the day that God sets you loose from that. He breaks it off of you. God will take every one of your disappointments and make it a divine appointment in your life. You're here today because God wants to set you free from some things you have been okay with. You are here today because God wants to straighten you up. Oh, that was for your neighbor, huh? Tell your neighbor that was for you right there. That was tell your neighbor that was a, that's the wrong neighbor. Tell the other neighbor. Tell the other neighbor that, that was for you. Pastor said, God's gonna straighten you up. I believe God wants to straighten us all up because it's only in the posture of being straight that you can actually see the future. It is only in the posture of you being straight and firm that you can see that there's hope for your family. And today, just like this woman was loosed, God wants to loose you from everything that is binding you, bending you, and limiting you. I declare you are going to be loosed today in the name of Jesus. Number three. I'm going to close today. The Bible says that when the pastor of the church <laughs> saw what Jesus did on the Sabbath, the pastor got upset. How could you, Jesus? It's a Sabbath. We don't heal on Sabbath. You're not supposed to do miracles on Sabbath. And, I, and it sounds funny, but can I challenge you that some of you had taken that attitude. God can't do that miracle for my family. God can't break the things in my life. They're, God can't, how dare you tell me God can perform a miracle. And then Jesus has a word with him and he says, you hypocrite. This is what he said. You treat your animals better than you treat this woman. That's literally what he said. Don't you on the Sabbath Take your ox or donkey, loosen them and lead them to water. Yet you tell me I can't heal this woman. Here's what Jesus was saying. Sabbath has become bigger than just a day. I am your Sabbath. Sabbath is the day of rest. Sabbath is the day that you stop working. And when we enter the presence of God, and when I become born again, and I enter into His rest, I can stop working so hard for the approval I don't have to work for it and earn it anymore because he is my rest he is my rest oh I want to speak to a mom right now that has felt tired I'm not talking just like I'm tired because I went to work. Here's one. I'm tired because I'm pregnant. No pun intended. 
I'm talking about like I'm tired of seeing the same circumstance over and over and over again I'm tired when are things gonna finally look up when are things are gonna are finally gonna straighten up today God calls you and says come and enter my rest and today will be the last day that you're bound today will be the day you enter my rest today will be the day that everything that you that binded you will finally have to break you loose many are grateful that we have rest in Jesus and so the Bible says that when he was done speaking to him and he like you know stop it the Bible says that everyone who was there began to rejoice and it says that every one of his adversaries were put to shame and the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him number three everything that is against you will be put to shame You got to get this in your spirit today everything that is against your family will be put to shame everything that is against your wealth will be put to shame everything that is against the blessing of God over your life will be put to shame and can I can I challenge you today it's not even your fight to fight God's got it. You didn't hear what I said. It's not your fight to fight. God's got it. Deuteronomy 28, 7. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Not only is God going to set you free, not only is Jesus offering to break every bondage off of you, but he's also guaranteeing your victory over everything that comes against you. Isaiah says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you, God will bring to judgment. That's your promise. The Bible says that when she, when she finally was healed, she got up and she began to praise God for her healing. So this is what I want us to do collectively. I want you to all please stand. And we're going to take some moments right now to believe God for a miracle. It wasn't until Jesus touched her the Bible says that he first declared the word over her but then he went and he put his hand on her and when he laid his hand on her the Bible says she immediately was healed immediately but the first thing she had to do was get close enough to let Jesus put his hand on her to take a step of faith 
that even in her bondage that even while the, the evil spirit had control over her that even while she didn't it didn't look good she had enough courage to get close to Jesus so that Jesus could put his hand on her and when he touched her the Bible says immediately she was healed so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna count to three if you need God to do a miracle you're gonna grab your purse grab your stuff get your family get your children and you're gonna come to this up here to this place and as you come up here I declare that the hand of God is gonna touch you and when God touches you everything that had you bound it's going to break off of you in the name of Jesus I declare the authority of the Word of God I declare courage over every person today is the day of miracles 